Hey everybody, Sean Tubbs here. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Origin FX Revival Drive. It's a really versatile two-channel overdrive pedal, all just top-notch studio-grade componentry. Now, I know when you look at this thing, you think, oh Lord, that's a lot of controls and switches, but it's, it's really not. Uh, when you look at it, it's basically the same controls on both sides of the pedal. You have a, a silicon rectified side, and you have a valve rectified side, and that's uh, you know we'll get into that in the uh, in the demo. But essentially, the uh, potentiometers and switches are exactly the same. So now, one thing I want to make sure everybody knows is these sounds in this demo is going to be all strictly direct into my DAW. So I'm coming out of this straight into my uh, my Apogee Quartet, uh, quartet Channel Four. And then I'm going to use uh, basically torpedo uh, wall of sounds, the two notes uh, wall of sounds IRs. So you're not going to hear any amps or uh, mics. This is just all direct because uh, uh, Simon Keats and the guys at, at Origin really wanted to focus on uh, how well this pedal uh, sounds as a, a direct uh, line pedal. And it really does sound good. It performs well. So uh, let's just look at the valve rectified side. Uh, top left you've got your volume control now it is a volume control that does create gain the reason it's called a volume control is it was really designed to emulate the volume control on say like an old uh, Marshall amp that was a non master input as you start cranking the volume you do get more gain but it also adds more lows and can get really really thick sounding it responds exactly the same which is really remarkable right next to that you've got your lows and that's pretty self-explanatory um, but it, it does work really well because as you're cranking that volume, you're going to get more lows. So you're going to need to roll the actual lows potentiometer counterclockwise to uh, compensate for that as you're cranking gain because that volume control actually works a little bit as a presence kind of roll off as well. As you start really cranking that, it's going to get a little bit softer in the tops. And as you start uh, rolling down the lows potentiometer, you're going to get more uh, presence and mids. Now right next to that is what's called the more slash presence control. As you turn it to the right uh, clockwise, it's going to be more of a typical presence control you'd have on a Fender or a Marshall. But if you turn it to the left, what it's going to do is it's going to start reducing what's called negative feedback in the circuit. Now, uh, simply stated, uh, it's going to make the amp sound a little bit more open, uh, quite a bit less compressed, less controlled. Um, as you uh, put it in the center, that's going to be kind of a neutral setting. And like I said, as you turn it to the right, it's going to be more of a uh, typical presence control. And you'll get to hear that in the demo. Output is exactly what you think it is. Uh, it's the overall output of the pedal. The blend control allows you to blend uh, dry uh, with the overdrive sound. Now, in this case, I'm not going to be so apt to, to get too into that because we're running this as a direct to DAW kind of thing. If I was running this into an amp, you'd be blending the character of your guitar and that amp sound with the overdrive pedal. In this case, we're just running the guitar basically straight into the DAW. So you're not getting so much character from the guitar, but I will say I do have this pedal set up so that the guitar's signal itself is uh, actually affected by the EQ settings on the pedal, and that's how it worked best uh, running direct uh, into uh, IRs. Um, and the last uh, potentiometer is called the ghost control. And what that does is it emulates, if you were to take just an old Fender Tweed and non-master volume and start cranking that thing up, you're gonna start hearing these kind of subharmonic lows, kind of ghosting frequencies under your notes. And it's a very natural occurrence in that type of circuit. And Simon Keats, who designed this pedal, did an excellent job uh, emulating that with the ghost control. So we'll get into that as well in the demo. Now, uh, you have two choices of bright cap settings. Um, you can go with kind of a more British uh, bright cap, which would be more like a late 60s plexi kind of thing. Or you can go with a US bright cap, which is gonna be more of a kind of a Fender, uh, like blackface twin maybe, uh, bright cap. On the British side, you're not only adding top end, but you're also adding some mids, which is exactly what the bright cap did in that kind of late 60s era Marshall. On the other side, now, oh, keep in mind, that's gonna actually create gain as well. We'll get into that. And then on the US side, that's gonna be more, like I said, a Fender, maybe deluxe reverb bright cap setting or a, 
or maybe a blackface twin. It's going to just add chimey top end. And you can actually compensate the amount of effect that bright cap is going to have by using the bright cap cut uh, attenuator, which is really, really handy depending on what amp you're using. Uh, in the preamp section, you can choose between kind of a British preamp, kind of a more neutral setting in the center, or a more US style preamp. So once again, you're going to get kind of a British Marshall based preamp or a more kind of Fender uh, based preamp. And you can choose between uh, those or have it in the center and have it be a little bit more neutral. So what I just told you on the valve rectifier side applies exactly the same to the silicon rectifier side. Now the universal controls are the mid assign. That mid assign switch is going to allow you to choose which channel you'd like to turn mids uh, onto. Uh, um, now in this case I also have the, uh, the foot switch here which allows me to turn the mid uh, bump on uh, via foot switch as well as uh, basically override the blend control works great. Um, so you can assign your mid assign to either the valve side or the silicon side and you can also uh, choose what mid frequency uh, you want to have uh, added to it as well as the level and you can see those many potentiometers down there and it, it works great. I'll get into that in the demo. The dry gain control is a universal control. Exactly what you think. It adds gain or allows you to attenuate the gain in your dry uh, input, which is really handy, especially if you're kind of doing more blending. Now there's another universal control or global control called the high shelf, and that's going to allow you to basically choose kind of your shelving, high shelving frequency for the, uh, the whole pedal. And once again, that'll apply to uh, you know, what type of amp you're using. Is it a really bright amp, really dark amp? You can compensate there. We already touched on the bright cap cut. The only other universal control on this pedal on the top is going to be the reamp EQ. Now in this case, because we're running strictly IR uh, direct into a, a, a DAW using IRs, I'm using the power amp setting. So it's designed to, to either run into like a flat response power amp or into a, 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 a DAW. Now EQ2 is kind of more of a Marshall thing and EQ1 is going to be more of a deluxe thing and once again those settings are going to apply uh, basically to whatever amp you happen to be using and that's why this pedal will basically just work with anything and then of course you've got uh, the the foot switch on the left allows you to toggle between the two channels foot switch on the right allows you to uh, bypass the uh, the the pedal completely and then you've got three uh, little uh, mini toggles there in the front of the pedal. Uh, the first one allows you to basically have the uh, pedal's overall EQ on your guitar signal which is how I have it set up for this uh, situation. I believe the second one allows you to choose the frequency that the ghost uh, setting works at so you can either go 50 Hertz which is kind of Marshall ghosting or you can go 60 Hertz which is I think more Fender ghosting and if I have that turned around. Hopefully not. That's what that does. And then the third switch allows you to choose, like say you just love the silicon rectifier, well you can actually have two silicon rectified channels if you uh, so desire. And we'll get into the, the sound difference between those two, uh, the silicon rectifier and the valve rectifier in the demo. So without further ado, let's check out this Origin Effects Revival Drive. Okay, let's get into some sounds. I'm gonna use or start with the uh, the silicon rectified side of this pedal, and we'll just kind of go from clean to mean, and then we'll we'll go to the uh, the uh, valve rectified side of the pedal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with a Fender uh, IR. It's kind of a typical speaker situation that you'd have in say a Fender Twin Reverb. Um, and as I said, we've got it dialed kind of clean. Um, I'll let you hear it that way, and then we'll kind of start turning up the gain. And then, yeah, maybe we'll switch to more of a Marshall IR so you can hear it that way as well. So right now, here's kind of a Fendery sound. sweet, very clean. Uh, it feels really good. Now I've got it set up on the US bright cap and I also have it on the US preamp. So we're dealing with kind of a uh, 
Fender Deluxe meets kind of a twin thing with the bright cap on. Now obviously if that was a little too bright, you shut the bright cap off. And now we're a little bit warmer. But I really like it with the bright cap on. Let's just go ahead and start turning up uh, gain a little bit. Now, as we start turning up the volume on this thing, it's going to react just like an amplifier would. So if you start turning up the volume on an old Fender, um, you're also going to get more lows. So kind of keep that in mind uh, as you're cranking it. So now I'm kind of hitting it with a back uh, humbucker. Um, we've kind of gone from a really pretty Fender uh, clean to kind of a broken uh, type thing with a neck pickup. Still totally acting like a Fender would act to me and then even hitting it uh, to, with a humbucker. It's responding accordingly. It sounds great. not overly compressed feeling or sounding um, we're still on the obviously the silicon rectified side so obviously a silicon diode is going to respond to converting uh, voltages way quicker than a tube would but there's still a little bit of kind of power amp uh, sag there <laughs> Now we could get it uh, to sound a little bit more out of control by kind of taking some of that negative feedback out. Go the other way, it'll smooth out a little bit, but still have some presence. And that's what I really like about this pedal is there's a lot of switches and controls on it, but they're all very purposeful and they all do something with very subtle moves. So you could hear, you know, just that little move there. Just in the presence and even going the other way into more of the negative feedback. Just totally different sounds with just little tweaks of these controls and of course we know what the lows do we know what the volume does we know what the output of the pedal uh, does now uh, the blend as far as this demo goes I'm gonna kind of leave it on the overdrive side I think the blend in my opinion would apply to uh, blending the character of your guitar into a specific amplifier that you're using. In this case, we're running straight into an IR, so there's not a ton of character coming off the guitar. Now, I do have the pedal set up so that uh, the EQ does affect the dry sound of the guitar, even when the pedal's bypassed. There's a dip switch in the front, there's a little mini switch, and you put it to the up position, and you can have that, and that works best when you're running into IRs. And I'm also gonna keep the pedal on the power amp setting, which is better for running into either a flat response amp, or as I said, um, IRs. <laughs> So you can use that, and I might let you guys check that out on the valve side, just so we can talk about this blend override switch. The one control I do want to talk about that isn't going to be as obvious, but sounds killer, is the ghost control. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to emulate that sound of like, say you take an old Fender Tweed and you just crank the volume on it, where well, you're going to get these kind of ghosting undertones. And I'll kind of let you hear uh, uh, what I mean. So I've got it at about 12 o'clock right now. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it up. Hear that ghosting down there? Very 
very cool setting. And what I found is, is when I shut it all the way off, it still sounded really good. <laughs> then I was kind of missing it. It was like, where have you been all my life? So I keep it at about, in my opinion, where I really like it is just past about 12 o'clock. It just makes it feel and sound very natural and ampy, especially running into IRs. <laughs> Now, that applies to both sides of uh, the pedal. Now, what I can do real quick while we're still on this channel is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a Marshall setting. Uh, let's go... Yeah, this, this one's got vintage 30s in it, this IR. And it's basically a 4 by 12 and it's what I used for all the rhythm sounds uh, in that performance song. So I, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and let's, let's throw it over to the, uh, the British side. Uh, preamp which is going to be more Marshall based and let's see how that sounds so we got a different IR and now we're kind of more in the the British voice <laughs> Now that already sounds killer. The reason we're not hearing as much gain is because I'm not using the bright cap. Now on the US side, uh, it doesn't create as much gain as just kind of give you some top end. But if you add the bright cap to uh, on, the, on the kind of British side, it's not only giving you top end, but it's also gonna give you mids, which is gonna create gain. <laughs> sounds great it sounds very marshally and just kind of has that kind of old school plexi thing going maybe super lead but you know uh, solid state rectified <laughs> now we could go to US preamp and leave the bright cap where it is <laughs> I thought that was a really cool sounding combination uh, where you've got kind of a, a US preamp but with kind of a British kind of upper end uh, mid and, and top and gain. Now on the silicon side, once again, it's it's you know it's going to be way quicker at converting voltage. So it's not so much a big sonic difference between silicon rectified and tube rectified as much as it is kind of a feel difference. Just how quickly it reacts to the changes in voltage is really uh, what you're uh, getting between the two channels. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and just bump over. I'll stay on my Marshall uh, IR. Let's go ahead and just bump over to the valve rectified side. That sounds great. Okay, so immediately for me, it feels there's a lot more of just kind of that really natural kind of amp uh, sag happening, but it still feels great. It's not overly compressed. It just feels a little bit different, more like a tube rectified circuit would uh, feel. So right now we're using the, the British side bright cap and the British uh, preamp. And that certainly sounds uh, very, very kind of super lead.
sounds really killer, but what if we wanted to go for more of almost an AC30 type thing? Now, the way I think it can be achieved is simply by, once again, let's move over to more kind of removing some of that negative uh, feedback. And, you know, basically the amp's gonna be a little bit more immediate, a little bit less controlled sounding. <laughs> So it really sounds great set over there. I mean, we kind of just went into Vox land. Now, same thing, keep in mind, when you turn the volume way down to get you know less gain, you're also gonna have less lows, which is actually cool because I was able to get a lot more kind of that mid bark uh, going on uh, for that particular kind of sound. Just depends on what you're after. These controls work really, really well. So speaking of the controls, let's just, for giggles, <laughs> Let's go ahead and just go from, let's leave this bright cap where it is, but let's just throw over to the US side on the preamp. That sounds killer. I mean, just that one, just throwing that switch, we had a completely different tone. And of course we can put it in the middle and you've got more of just kind of a flat preamp. I shouldn't say flat, but it's gonna have less of that uh, US character or less of the, the kind of British character. <laughs> Now that applies to the uh, silicon side as well. And we can do the same thing with the bright cap. Here's no bright cap, so you're gonna get less gain. But you could use that if you really wanted a super clean kind of tone. And then of course, here's the US side. And you can hear, as I mentioned before, that doesn't add a lot of gain. It just kind of adds that kind of, you know, Fender kind of 66 twin, you know, bright switch to it. Now, the one thing I do want to show you guys is the, uh, the mid uh, engage. So you can choose your mid level and mid frequency. And that's what I used for my solo tones. So I kind of had the gain kind of pumped uh, for my solo tone in that performance. And I thought that was a great rhythm sound, but what I needed was just a bit of a mid bump, and that's where this mid engage switch came into play. Now, I've got the foot switch, but you can do it from the pedal. You can choose whichever side you would like that to engage in, but check it out. So I had that on for all of the solo settings and it, it really worked out great. Um, you know, and what I found with this pedal is, man, I could literally take this thing on a gig with maybe some sort of booster pedal in the front, like maybe an EP booster or an Archer Clean booster, um, and literally go from clean to kind of a boosted overdrive to a higher gain rhythm sound to hitting the mid-engage switch, and I've got essentially four stages of gain 
uh, at my feet. And then if I wanted to just run like a simple, like a torpedo cab, like a two notes torpedo cab IR, I could literally have that on the pedal board and I just route straight to front of house and we're good to go, just like I'm doing here, coming out of the pedal straight into my quartet and then using uh, IRs. <laughs> So just so many sounds to be had. Um, I will kind of demonstrate, even though I don't feel it applies so much to when you're running direct into IRs, how this blend override works. So say we've got this sound, and this would be all overdrive pedal, and you want to blend some of your guitar into it. So we can hear the guitar in there and say you're kind of digging that sound but you want to be able to just shut it off immediately via foot switch and go all the way back to pedal. So that switch works really, really great, and it's another just kind of added uh, feature for versatility, especially when you're playing live. So that's the Revival Drive, you guys. Really great sounding pedal. Go to the website. Uh, Simon Keats did an amazing job explaining this pedal uh, better than anybody could because he's the guy that built it. And as always, I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, and I'll see you next time.